There, I want to remain, yet want also to circle higher still. Praise God. Praise God in your sanctuary. Praise God in your mighty firmament. Praise God for your mighty deeds. Praise God according to your surpassing greatness. Praise God with trumpet sounds. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with clanging cymbals. Praise God with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise God. Praise God. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on a hill, Uzzah and Ohio. The sons of Abinadab were driving the new cart with the Ark of God. Ohio went in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. It was told King David, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the Ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Oban Adam to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart.
When I was in seminary, Sonic Plug came out with this album, Resonate. And I bought the album because there were songs about it, about the environment. I was like, whoa, Christian rock music, talking about the environment. And as I listened to the album over and over again, there was this one song that sort of was weird to me because it had this weird noise at the beginning. And then it went into a techno beat. But here's the thing. They designed that song to be played really loud. Because if you started out and you couldn't understand what the weird noise was, you would turn it up. And as you turned it up, you would start hearing African singers singing and dancing. And as the African singers are singing and dancing, Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And a techno beat starts in here. And you get that sense and you want to jump up and dance to the techno beat. And then he starts singing. You're the Lord of the dance. You're the dancing Lord. Everybody dance now. And I'm like, yes, dancing in church. We should be doing this. Because, you know, I come from the UCC. We don't dance in church. When we're invited to stand and sway, we have a whole lot of trouble and don't sway very well and often not to the beat. So to get up and dance for God, I loved this song. And here's the thing about this song. It's got this love song sense to it. Meaning that if you didn't know that it was about God, when you got to a certain point, you would think it's a love song. I'm going to give it all I've got, going to run to you, run to you, run to you, just like a child. It's just this love I have inside. I need your presence in my heart. I want your love more each day. And when I dance before you, I'm going to dance with all my might. There's a bit of a romantic quality to the song. That we're in love with God. That Jesus is our boyfriend. Although the last words he sings, I'm going to dance with all the might, are meant to remind us of King David. We're meant to remember that there is this point in time where David decided that he wanted to move the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies, the tablets of Moses, from where they had been, closer to Jerusalem, into Jerusalem, into the spot where the temple will be built. And as he's getting the Holy of Holies. David starts to dance. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. The Lord of the dance, right? And when I dance before you, Lord, I'm going to dance with all my might. David danced before the Lord with all his might. His wife sees it, his first wife, Michael. And she has contempt for him in her heart. He deserves her contempt. But it doesn't take away from that joyful exuberance David exhibits when he remembers what it's like to be in love with the Lord. He is so overcome with the beauty of God that he can't help but dance with all his might and make everyone around him join in that beautiful music of dance and celebration. I'm going to dance with all my might. I thought of this song as I was researching our mystic today. Because our mystic says this, I cannot dance, Lord, 
unless you leave me. If you want me to leap with abandon, you must entune the song. Then I shall leap into love, from love into knowledge, from knowledge into enjoyment, from enjoyment beyond all human sensation. There I want to remain, yet what also to circle higher still. Mechtel is a mystic born around 1207. And when she was around 12 years old, she had a defining ecstatic experience where she saw all things in God and God in all things. And so then when she was in her 20s, she decided to join the Beguines. She didn't want to become a nun, but she wanted to give herself to a religious community. And so these are lay religious folk who believe in a life of simplicity, service, and spiritual practice. And she was encouraged by her spiritual mentor to write down her visions and experience. And what she wrote down is called the flowing light of the Godhead. It describes union with God. How do we become spiritually one with God? And she describes it as a sacred marriage between God and the soul, between the bride and Christ. Her poetry is very evocative. It's very romantic. It fits into this worldview of God as the lover of our souls. And it is described in love, words of love, especially in words of poetry and love. She makes me ask an interesting question. Because while I love that song from Sonic Flood, and it still makes me want to get up and techno dance, it makes me wonder about our religious experiences. How do we view God and our relationship to God? And what is our relationship to God to be like? What do I mean by that? Well, one of the things or the critiques that were always made about new non-denominational churches, our old Assembly of God churches, who are now the new non-denominational churches, was they act as if Jesus is their boyfriend. As if Jesus is someone that you can be personally in love with in love. And so a lot of the songs that you sing have that sense of this love relationship, a love that you could just as well hear on a pop station song as you can in a Christian rock station song. And so it's this sense that Jesus is our divine boyfriend, is the one we fall in love with. And so being as I come from the United Church of Christ in the main line, we found that image very uncomfortable. Because we're the people, especially in the churches I grew up in, that probably didn't clap at all in worship when I was little. And now sometimes clap, but some of those congregations, you get sternly looked at if you clap who don't know how to sway when invited to sing. And when we're invited by guest people to stand up and dance, it's a whole nother level of discomfort. And so the part of me that loves to dance loves that idea of getting up in worship and experiencing this emotional connection with Jesus as my boyfriend. But the other part of my brain, the rational side, kicks in and says, well, that's not enough. It's not enough to love Jesus. You've got to have more than that. You've got to do more than that. You've got to be more than that. And so I will be honest with you. I don't know how I feel about these descriptions of God that Mechtel gives us about this 
romantic, erotic relationship with God. The sense of God as our lover, as us, as the bride of Christ. Do they have questions? Can we fall in love with God? Can God fall in love with us? I mean, because what she describes is a spiritual journey of courtship between God and the soul. God made us for love. So she's inviting us into this relationship of love with God, which I totally love and totally am uncomfortable with all at the same time. I love the imagery that Mechel gives us. I cannot dance, Lord, unless you lead me. If you want me to leap with abandonment, you must entune the song. Her poem, her love poem to God. Invites us to see God as the one that's helping us move. As giving us the steps that will carry us forward provides those dance steps that will move us. But if we want to move into the dance of God, she argues that we need God to send the song, share the tune. And that when we get that tune and that song, then we can move through our spiritual journey. We can leap into love. I love that image, right? Leap into love. That when we get the song from God, and we hear the song from God, we can leap into love. We can leap into love. And then she goes, we can move from love into wisdom. From wisdom into rapture, and beyond rapture, into mystery. And when we're there in what should be the mystery of God, where we want to remain, she argues that there's still more to learn, to circle higher and higher and higher into the divine. She invites us into a dance with God, a dance of movement that when we learn and start to dance in love, as we learn how to practice love, as we learn the moves of love, those moves that teach us how to love our neighbor, those moves that teach us how to love our enemy, those moves that teach us to love the world, the way God loves the world. To look out on humanity and creation and see love. And as we learn to take those first steps with God, those first tentative dance moves, as we learn to take that step and dance, we learn more. She says as we leap into love, we also learn. We gain more knowledge and wisdom. For it, it's one thing to say love your neighbors because then we think, oh, it's our neighbors, the ones near us, it's our family. But as we learn more, we learn how that neighbor becomes that person that we don't want to love. That for Jesus, the neighbor, is you to the other person, the person who is outcast, who is lost, who is last, who has been left behind, who is sick, who is hungry, who is imprisoned, who is impressed. That one is the one we're to learn to love. And as we learn the wisdom of love, as we move in baby steps, 
from forgiveness of our bullies and to love of our enemies. As our wisdom increases, we move to a sense of enjoyment, of rapture, of that ability to leap and dance. And in that enjoyment and rapture, it's when we're in the mystery of God. And when we're in the mystery of God, she invites us to go even higher, to circle even more. That there is always more knowledge, more leaping, more love, more enjoyment. So I invite you to relax and to love. I invite you to relax and leap into love and then see where you end up. Amen. I invite you to take in a deep breath and release it. I invite you to breathe in and to breathe out. I invite you to breathe in deeply and breathe out. I cannot dance, Lord, unless you lead me. I cannot dance, Lord, unless you lead me. I cannot dance, Lord, unless you lead me. God, we live in strange and uncertain times. We are trying to navigate our way in this world, a world we've never experienced before. We are pulled in different directions with answers that contradict each other. We just want our families to be safe. We just want the world to be safe. I cannot dance, Lord, unless you lead me. God, we need you to lead us. Show us the people, the leaders, the answers that are right and true. Show us the steps that lead us into the new dance. Then we shall leap into love. For we have heard the song. We know the song. You have shared the song. The song that shares with us what it means to leap into love. You have shared with us what love is. You've told us that steps of the dance to love fully and completely, to love our enemies, to love our neighbors. And you just didn't leave it at that. You shared what it looked like. You shared that it meant the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the lame will jump with joy and leap. You shared with us that it means the hungry will be full. The poor will receive justice and mercy and debt cancellation. The oppressed will be set free. Set free. And the prisoners will be visited. You shared with us that world of mercy and justice and kindness and compassion. The steps that we know how to dance where mourning is comforted, where grief is but for an evening, where the sick receive healing care. God, you showed us the steps of the dance. 
You show us the steps that lead us into the dance. The dance that has been danced since the beginning of time, the whirling and twirling of creation, the dance of love, a love that causes us to breathe deep, a love that makes all things new. Help me to learn to leap into love. As we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to give generously to the work and mission of this congregation where following Jesus means loving our neighbor and loving God fully and completely. You can give by visiting our website, stpaulshinkley.org. Let us pray. God, you take delight in us and fill us with everything good so that all may share in your, our joy. Receive what we offer as testimony to your goodness and let these gifts lead to rejoicing in your church and all the world. Amen. Nobody told you today that I love you. Remember that God loves you and always will. That Jesus loves you and always will. That I love you and always will. And I invite you this week to leap into love and see where it'll take you. Amen. Mm -hmm.